Howdy folks, Arxy here. Nice to see you all again. Now we're just quickly getting some diesel. Well, it's not very quickly actually. This girl sucks it up. The W60 has quite a decent sized tank in it, but we are just getting it topped up with some diesel. It was getting a little bit low, uh, and we need to do that because we are off across the other side of the map, heading across county to go and pick up an anhydrous toolbar. Corn's not quite ready to harvest, and as I alluded to last time, we have managed to borrow an anhydrous toolbar off one of the neighbours. So uh, there we go, sounds like things are full. So we'll jump back up in here and get on the road. So yes, as I was saying, we have been able to borrow an anhydrous toolbar from a neighbour, so we're going to head on over and go and get that picked up. Uh, once we've done that, we need to get back over here to the field, and then we need to take the pickup. We actually need to go and grab an anhydrous tank from up at the anhydrous supplies. So uh, the neighbour doesn't have one of those, they just get them and sort of loose them full. They get the, picked up full from the anhydrous supplier, and then you take it back when it's empty, and uh, it's kind of like a, I guess, a wet lease or something like that on the tank. Uh, it seems to work out pretty well. Well, what would I know? I've never used it before, but hopefully it's going to work out very well. So that is the plan getting some anhydrous into the ground, into the soil. Uh, the soybean fields that we have been working in, they are all going to be corn fields next year, so uh, it'll be ideal to get a good boost of nitrogen into them before winter, get that soil turned over and uh, ready to settle over winter before we plant into it in spring again. So that's the plan, that's what we're going to do. We'll get on down, get things all picked up and get underway very, very soon. just coming up the road here that place in there on the left if you remember that's where we went for that auction and managed to pick up our sprayer from so uh, that is not where we're heading though we're just heading up to this little well, little it's a decent sized red barn up here this is uh, obviously another one of the locals haven't been to see them yet or see the yard but they have got the tool bar all set up and ready for us to grab hold of uh, fingers crossed we can actually make it across this narrow little bridge not a huge amount of space but if we can get across with the jewels we should be able to squeeze our way across now I can't see it out of that side of the barn so I'm going to assume we need to head on up the front here if there's an entrance yeah this looks like looks like us let's get turned in there and uh, I think there we go there it is sitting waiting patiently for us to get hooked up to so we'll get spun around get this all connected up to the back of the tractor head on back down to the farm in fact I'm saying heading back down to the farm what we might do is actually ah yes we will go back to the yard because I need to get the pick up so uh I was thinking we could actually stop at the closest soybean field, but uh, I think if we go back and get the pickup, then we can go and grab those uh, anhydrous tanks, I think. Jump out there. Just going to have a look and see how close we are. That is not a bad effort, even if I do say so myself. Right, get things hooked up. Hoses as well. Let's get back down to the shed. Go and grab those anhydrous tanks. So here we are back into the yard. So if we just uh, pull on in here. Just go and get things parked up. Now, just trying to actually remember where the pickup is. It must still be over in the field with the harvester, the combine, and the soybean header. So we haven't actually got around to bringing those back over yet either, which is a little bit remiss of me. We'll get things parked up there, actually. That turned off. And, uh, well, well, I guess we'll start the long trek over to go and get those all brought back. We did manage to get the auger moved out of the way because obviously that bin is full. Now, while we're here, actually, I'll very quickly jump in here. You'll notice a little bit of a change. I did ask the question last time whether the 46 series that we had of the International Harvester tractor was an appropriate one and a lot of people did say it is possible to locate them in the uh, Americas and Canada and the United States but a little less common. So we have replaced it out here, we've gone for the 1486, it's about the same horsepower, this one is just a touch bigger. We were at 150, I think this is 162, but it seemed to be the most appropriate. It's not going to change what we do with it, we'll just use it for planting, for running the auger, things like that. We'll probably put the baler on the back of it when we get to doing the corn stalks. So there we go, for those who had quizzed me on the tractor, we've made that call and we've gone and traded it out for that. So from a continuity point of view, that explains why we'd have a different tractor. Anyhow, let's go and beat our feet, we're going to head on over Go and grab the pickup. We might as well bring everything back as well while we're at it. And uh, then we're going to be able to get these anhydrous tanks. 
So that's us back here, everything done. We'll just get everything unhooked and dropped off there. That's the header trailer. Now we're going to have to go over the header and give that a good wash. We've finished with that for the season, so before we get that put away, we'll uh, give that a good tidy up and a good go over. Uh, we've parked the combine in the shed for now because we are going to need to go through and change all the settings over on that to move into the corn. So that's why we've parked that over there. Uh, that is the rationale behind my decisions, and I'm going to stick with them. So now that we've uh, caught up on all those sort of chores and tasks let's jump back in here well, let's head on down the road and go and find some anhydrous tanks so we can at least get started on what it is we set out to do today a bit of a funny setup this place but this up here just in here on the left is called landus anhydrous and this is where we can go in to get our anhydrous trailers and i've got two of them sitting over there so we'll just go in um like i said it's a bit of a funny little joint not really Kind of what you'd expect, but I guess they uh, keep this all a little bit further away. So go in and uh, have a look in the shed, have a chat to the staff here, see what we need to do. Um, but I'm assuming we need to back into one of those and get them hooked up. And then we've got our refill point there, a couple of valves. So I'm guessing that gets all threaded into the tank and uh, we'll get things topped up. So let's just back into this one. I don't want to get too close, but we'll figure out that might be quite good and uh, let's go and have a chat about what we need to do well that's all pretty easy we'll hook up to this one trailer they reckon we might only need one but if we need a second one we can either come back and grab swap out for another one or uh, we can come back and get this one filled up but basically hook up and uh, then we'll drive in over there I'll get the tank filled up for us uh, charge us for the pleasure and then we can get on down and start getting some spread so get that onto there seem to be any hoses or anything we need to hook up with regards to lights or anything like that so get back into the pickup and just slowly go over here the nozzles there you can see on the very front so if we can get this in nice and close makes it a little bit easier for them there we go right about there be about perfect right let's go and see about getting this filled up i don't even know how much it's going to cost us let's go and find out well, there we go, we've got 396 gallons, we're full up in the tank and it cost us $2,250. So, when we consider how far this is going to get us, if it gets us a good way over the field, um, then it's probably actually not a bad way to buy some fertiliser and get some nitrogen put into the ground and save a little bit on the amount of nitrogen we have to put in when we're seeding. So uh, it could be, could be a bit of a benefit. Right, let us get this back down to the yard. We're going to get everything hooked up onto the back of the toolbar uh, make sure everything's all working properly and then we'll set to seeing how far this is going to go i am able to manually set the application rate which we'll talk about a little bit more once we get to the tractor and get things up and going in the field well here we are we're finally over in the field i saved you all the uh, blushes of watching me hook up to the trailer it wasn't actually too bad at all but let's get that all folded down there's the toolbar in position now i think we need to turn that on power it up and lower it down and we should then if we bring up our mini map we should be able to see that as we go we'll be able to get some nitrogen applied now I'm also going to bring up our menu uh, menu there and i'm going to deactivate our automatic application rate which we've done there and now i'm also going to boost our application rate so i think that is k pushes that up um, and i'm going to go for about 70 kilograms a hectare uh, being applied so not sure how much that is going to put on as we go through but i think that is going to be a good start we do know that corn is a high demanding crop and does require a decent amount of nitrogen so i think as just a sort of starting point that might work out all right so let's just see if we pull forward a little bit and there you go you can see down in the bottom of the mini map we are getting the green application of nitrogen going on plan is obviously to go into the field rather than uh, go around it to start with we'll do the insides before we finish off with the headlands um, and we're just going to get into it so I think I'll tell you a little bit more about the toolbar in a little while but let's just get started we'll do a little bit of a time lapse here as we get through and into the field and we'll catch up with you in just a little bit Raindrops falling on the street I can't recall when I last saw the sun 
summer's just a memory, a faded piece of history. No one can remember all the fun. The late night barbecue, zipping on a genie juice. I never shy away from a good time Coming on Friday night I see my friends and feel alright There ain't no stopping us from having fun There ain't no cloud inside The future is looking bright I've got to admit, this has gone a lot faster than I was expecting. I thought we could have been in here for quite some time. Uh, Tractor has done a stellar job pulling this toolbar. If I'm correct, I'm pretty sure it was rated for a 350 horsepower requirement, and our tractor is only a little bit over 300. Um, so I'm I'm surprised. It's done a good job, and uh, we've got things done. Used up. What have we used up? 27%, 37%. So a little bit over a third of the tank. So I think considering this is one of the smaller fields we have we may have to consider uh, downsizing a little bit uh, down, decreasing the application rate in the other fields which won't be a bad thing uh, we can obviously put just put more fertilizer on when it comes time to plant rather than now but at least we are getting some put in there but that's going to leave us a nice seed bed to come and plant into with our corn come springtime speaking of the corn spin around it's looking pretty good down there. Can't wait to get in there with the combine and give that a good going through and uh, seeing what sort of yields we're going to get out of there. I am uh, genuinely excited to see how that might all go. But for now, we are going to head on down the road. We're going to go and make a start in the second of the fields. We're going to head to the one that we turn left out. We'll do the one by the train tracks last, purely for the fact it's uh, closest to the land us in hydras so we can uh, go and drop the tank off when we're finished and if we do run out we could choose to go and grab another one and fill it out and get a little bit more in hydras to finish it off so we'll see how we end up um, but let's get on down to the next field and make a start down there so we've made it here to the field i was just looking at where we're going to run i think we're going to run across on a bit of an angle sort of about where i'm looking there let's just get things turned on and lowered down and that should be a pretty good place to start i think if we head across about in this direction, you can kind of see that's actually one of the terrain angles that's in the map. Uh, you can sort of see, in fact, quite clearly there on the ground, the angle we're looking at at the moment. So that's going to work out, I think, pretty well. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. I'm super impressed with how well this tractor is pulling this. Uh, the horsepower rating is not quite the same, and it's, uh, it hasn't complained at all. Now, one thing I haven't done yet, we were just going to bump this application rate down just a touch. So I think if we go from K 
we'll put that down that's going up we want to go the other way do we M there we go let's put that down to 65 rather than the 75 just to see if we can make this anhydrous go a little bit further and reduce the likelihood of having to fill up when we get to the other field so we've got this one to do obviously and then the one just up the road and that'll be all of them done uh, so we're going to carry on get together a little bit of a montage here in this one and we'll see when we're up further through Well there we are, job done, uh, well this field done, we've still got one more to go, we're down to a quarter of our anhydrous left, so we obviously didn't reduce our application rate by quite as much as we would have liked to have, uh, we would like to have maybe 35% left for the field we're going to, because the one we're going to go do next is the biggest that we have, um, so it is probably going to take the most anhydrous, but it is the way it is, like I said the reason we've done it the way we are in this order, we'll try and find a gap in the traffic, that looks good. Uh, the reason we did it in this order is because the last field is the one that's closest down to the anhydrous supplier so if we need to run down and get them to top it up a little bit we uh, we should be able to do that without any drummers anyhow let's see if this will uh, shift up into a higher gear we can get it another gear right let's figure that out we'll uh, get on down to the field and we'll see you down there let's see we are just pulling up to the field Good, uh, like I've said many a time, this passing lane is such a handy position for us. We can let traffic go in front of us and then uh, not block them. Although, just looking, we're going to be holding up a little bit here. Wait for that pickup to go past. Right, let's get ourselves turned on into here and go and make a start up in this field. We will, I expect, to run out of anhydrous at some stage, um, but that's just the way it is. We'll uh, go and top up. It's just up there. It's not too far, just on the other side of the traffic lights and we'll be there so let's just try and figure out uh, we're not sure which way we're going to tackle this field probably try and go right up into the corner a little bit of a diagonal get some good long passes going and then we can break it up into some little chunks on either side so we'll get things unfolded we look around there we go one wing going down other wing down there we'll uh, get it ploughed up turn it on and make a little bit of a start get this all wound up into gear and we're going to head pretty much directly for those three orange trees straight down there in the end I think 
that is going to be the best spot for us. Once again, we're just having a few issues there with our gearing. Let's just see if we can find low. There we go. Right. That should help us get up to speed a little bit better than we were. There we go. That's us sorted. Right. Let's carry on. Jump into a bit more of a time lapse for this one and we'll see when we're finished. Well, there we are. We're as good as out of anhydrous 1.1 gallons left, so we're not going to bother. Probably could have done a little bit of a pass there, but we are going to head on back down to the anhydrous dealer. We're going to get another, I don't know, 15% in the tank. That should just about do. We've used 25%, but of course we have managed to do most of that field. We've really only got uh, a couple of small parts and the headlands still to go, so I'm kind of optimistic that we get... Uh, another 15% we should be good to go so let's get on down here like I said it's not too far to go just past the traffic light so we haven't bothered with the pickup or truck or anything like that in fact we can see it there already so let's go and get this topped up and get back going again so we've been and back here with some anhydrous and uh, we end up getting a little bit more than we needed 26% but actually when I reviewed exactly how much more of the field we had to do Probably actually not a bad shout getting that much. I think we will probably just about use it all. Um, but I'm going to start off here by going around the outside of the field. Now, we'll just try and find our low range gears. There we go. For some reason, this tractor doesn't like shifting between the different gear ranges, and it takes a little bit of uh, manual manipulation to find which one's actually going to be working best for you. We found that out with the plow, but hopefully, and there's going to kick in. We should try and pick up a couple of gears manually, and we should be able to get going and carry on. So, there we go. That is us back up and running. Like I said, a little bit more than we were intending to get. It was about 580 bucks, so not a bank breaker one, even though we are in the negatives there, um, but certainly not anything too expensive for us. So let's just carry on. A little bit more time lapse to get this field finished. Uh, we've got to go around it a couple of times, and then we've got a couple of spots still to do. So we'll get it finished, and we'll be back up to the yard.
Well, that's us done here. I think we all finish. There's a couple of little, little spots up in the middle of the field. I'm not going to worry about those. And then I've got this little piece here. We'll tidy up. and so tidy up a bit on the corner. But yeah, like I said, that is us done. Now I did wind back the application rate just a touch. Because as we started going around the headland, I suddenly looked, thought, gosh, we've used up a lot of anhydrous already. I hope we're going to make it to the end. As it turns out, we've made it worth about 26 gallons to spare. And uh, we would have been able to do it probably without having made the change. But at least we now have a uh, rather green looking field. You can see that down there in the corner. And uh, we're just going to have a look over the three fields at the precision farming data. So there we go, here's the field we've just been working in, you can see all the green through there looking really good. The dark bits I think relate to where we've kind of widened the field a little bit. Not sure what that straight line is through there, but it is what it is, it's looking good. Likewise up here, you can see again the area that we increased the field by. It does have a little bit more nitrogen on it, and then the other field up on the top here. This one's a little bit patchy, I'm not sure why we've got these orange stripes and that sort of thing. Actually, hand up, I do know why. I managed to uh, accidentally turn off. The application halfway around the field and uh, didn't turn it back on until I caught it a little bit later so that's why we've got those few orange stripes there but at least with the automatic application on the cedar as well putting some fertilizer on with the cedar we'll be able to get things picked up there and tidied up when we're planting and that'll give everything the right nitrogen so we're going to head on out of here because well, I can see that there was a car coming that way can't really see where it is now just turn a little bit there we go now we're clear so Head on back down this way. Um, one thing I didn't say and you didn't see, we were very close to that bridge. You wouldn't want to have a tall bar, much taller than this. Just looking back to get under that bridge, there is a very, very limited height clearance on that. So have to bear that in mind if we do get any bigger equipment and need to head up this way. But fortunately, the main deal is down here. There's no need for us to actually have to go past that bridge too many times. So anyhow, get on back down to the yard, get things tidied up, put away and call it quits for the day I think. Well I think the first thing we're going to do is go and park up over here by the hose and give this all a good clean off. Uh, obviously we're going to have to return the toolbar over to the neighbour that was only a borrow for now and uh, we obviously have to take the anhydrous tank back up to Landis and Hydrus so give them a good clean off and make sure they're nice and clean for when we take them back. Now mindful actually I was getting pretty close to that unload auger there on the bins. need to get used to having these around but here we go, we'll leave that there for now. Let's go and go and grab the hose. And we'll go and give this all a good wash off. Look how dirty that's got just from running in behind the dust and that in behind the toolbar. Well, like I said, we're just going to give this all a very quick clean off and make it look nice and tidy before we do take it back. But I think that is going to be a perfect spot for us to wrap up for this episode. It feels really good to have got that all done. It's one more job that we're not going to have to worry about in spring and it does mean that ground's going to have some time to settle, sit, freeze over winter uh, before we get back into it in the spring and plant our corn into those three fields. It's going to be different having corn spread out across the farm instead of where we've had it for the last couple of years just in the field over the road. So uh, fingers crossed that's all going to work out real, really well for us. Speaking of corn, all going to plan. Next month and not into October we should be into doing some harvesting in the corn. So again something else that I'm really excited about getting in there and doing that. We do have to get these bins finished off though. We've uh, not actually got anywhere to put the corn, obviously that one's full of beans. Um, so we're going to have to get these two bins finished off. Uh, I think they're not too far away from coming, so hopefully by the time we're back next month, uh, these will be all finished off and uh, we'll be ready to get going on corn. So, there we go. Another episode done and dusted as always. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.